one of the things I really like about the Yes Welder Flux 135, among many things I like about it, is the detachable whip of the gun. You can uh, unscrew it from the machine with a quarter turn with a dense connector and unplug the trigger wire and then put everything back in the box. Whereas other welders, uh, you know, you have that gun always hanging out of it and it kind of unruly and unwieldy but i plug that uh, trigger wire in there so that i can feed the wire back up through the gun i'll turn both knobs to maximum so that the wire speed will be as fast as possible coming out another thing i liked about was that uh, door that covers the the LED and the knobs so you don't bump them accidentally and stuff. Now I've got the wire coming out of the front of the machine there and I'm going to feed the gun onto I've rolled the, the plug over backwards a few times so that when I stick it in the hole and tighten it up it will be under no pressure to uh, try to unravel itself or come back loose from the hole. You know, it's set in there good and and fitting good. Now I'll take the nozzle off and take the, the tip off and run the wire out. It takes a little bit for it to come all the way through the hose and back up to the gun, so just hold the trigger and let her run and then let off when you see it come out. Now take the tip, put it back over the wire, screw it into the gun. And I just take my little pair of dikes and grab it a little bit and give it a little bit of a twist so it doesn't work its way loose. Snip the wire off with a little bit of stick out, put the cone back on. I myself prefer the flux core cones, but because I normally am welding sheet metal and have a lot of stick out, it doesn't really matter, the cone doesn't block my vision. Because the machine also does stick welding, it has a, a ground port and a positive port here in the front. And I'm goofing up right now by putting the ground into the ground because this is a flux core machine and the ground is, is a, or the ground cable is the positive and the gun is the negative. So I'll figure that out whenever I start trying to weld. I'm gonna start off by setting the first knob in the middle and setting the amps to 95. I'm welding this hinge I'm that is welding thick metal that's cracked away from, from the thinner hinge. metal. From the door blowing open. It's a recurring problem with these delivery vans. The Yes Welder Company is a great sponsor, and they've sent me these nice leather welding gloves, which I truly appreciate since I usually get my uh, fingers pretty hot sometimes with my thin gloves that I normally wear. Now I'm having trouble seeing the wire because the sun is shining in from behind me and it's shining inside my hood, and I can't see on my old welding helmet. I have a flap that goes across the back of the helmet to keep light from coming in from the backside. It took me a minute to figure out why I wasn't getting an arc, and I changed my uh, polarity on my ground cable. Now I'm ready to weld. I'm having to look at it and see if I'm in the right place because I can't see where I'm going to start welding. And I'm about to uh, give up on it here because I need to be able to see that that puddle. I'm trying to weld thick metal to thin metal and I absolutely need to see what I'm doing. Luckily I'm going to put my hat light onto my welding helmet and even though the sun is shining into the back of my welding helmet the, the headlamp will put out enough bright light right where I'm needing to weld for me to be able to see it. And now I've got the setup and I can start welding. I can see where I'm starting. And 
Another thing I had to do is to stop and change the amperage, which I ran to full power, 135 amps, in order to melt that thick metal of the hinge. Even with my high amperage, I can still do the microburst welding of the thinner metal where it's cracked up and above the uh, hinge, but I start on the thick metal with this high amperage and you know start running a bead, an actual bead on it and just carry it over into the sheet metal and then stop and then move on to the next spot, get the thicker metal hot, carry it over to the sheet metal, stop because the sheet metal will blow out if you, you know, try to keep that bead going. But I form a puddle in the thicker metal that is going deep into that thick metal and then move over to the sheet metal and let off the trigger when it uh, fuses with the sheet metal. Yes, the welder is doing a fabulous job of welding this. I'm having no trouble whatsoever. My weld will be a little ugly as it usually is because of the uh, sheet metal properties and the way you have to weld it with flux core, but it'll be strong and solid and the, the door will be uh, opening and shutting fine and ready for the next wind to catch it and rip out the metal further past the weld, probably. It's a bad design and, and it was job security. You can probably tell by the all the talking I do when I'm doing these welding videos that I love to weld and I really do and I'm thankful that you know welding produces its own light so I can see when I'm welding because of the bright light it, it makes it to where I can see what I'm doing you know I can't see to get started and that's why I put my hat light on the on the welding helmet so I can see where to start at you know other people can see through that auto darkening lens. They can see the gap that they're trying to weld and stuff. I can't see anything. I have to have light shining on, you know, where it is I'm going to start welding so that I can start in the right place. And, and I can't start the arc and then find the right place because all I can see is the actual area where the arc is. You know, I can see the puddle and know that I'm getting the puddle right, but I I can't see around the puddle other than right there at the edge where I can see that I'm, you know, at the gap that I'm welding. Now I'm welding the last of the last on the bottom edge of the hinge and get it started. Sometimes when you are uh, starting overhead, your, your bead that you've started, if it isn't uh, digging in, it falls out. But once you get started, then it becomes a lot easier. So I've got it going now. So now it's just a nothing to it the way we do it thing. I weld her up. You see how long I'm holding the trigger, and that's because of that thick metal. You already know that I don't hold the trigger for very long on the sheet metal, like microsecond. But this thicker metal, I can burn it in with that 135 amps. It's welded good and solid, I can promise you that. And then when I'm done welding, I can take it back apart and put it back in its box, which is uh, better for storage as far as I'm concerned, unless you have a dedicated welding cart to put it on, then it's much safer to put it back in its box where all the pieces will be protected from uh, bumps and bangs and, you know, dirt and elements and whatnot. I just... Uh, pull the wire out of the gun so that it'll be ready for the next assembly. Put it back in the box and seal up the top and it's ready to store. And here's the finished product. I've ground the, the flux off of it so you can see the weld. They'll put some seam sealer on it and paint it and all that. So please touch my like thingy. And subscribe, damn it!